Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer. And in this video, I'm going to discuss why data structures and algorithms are important. But before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. So you might have come across the terms data structures and algorithms, whether you're interviewing for a tech job or you're in your computer science degree, and you may be wondering why is this stuff important, okay? And it's really interesting that you really don't understand why this stuff is important until you actually have to implement something and, uh, and have to solve real world problems. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to do in this video is give you an example of a real world problem that you may come across in your job. Okay, so at most of these companies, say Facebook, Google, Amazon, wherever, they're all web companies. So that means they handle requests and return responses. So if I am on Google's app, and I ask them to, um, you know, if I ask them a question and that request gets sent to the Google servers, they do some work back there to try to, you know, figure out which web page is the best one for me to figure out to, for, for my query, right? So all of that happens in real time, obviously. And so you can imagine it. Google gets billions and billions of requests a second uh, to their web servers. So if their backend server is running a really slow query algorithm, for example, then it might take a really long time for that an individual request to get served. And then at scale, at that billion and billions of users, it may cause your server to crash. So when a server crashes, what does that mean? That means there's too much internal state on that server. So it runs out of memory, it runs out of compute power or what have you. So for example, if you have a billion requests that are sent every second, but your server takes two seconds to send a response, then you're gonna have this massive backlog of requests that you need to serve on your server. And then that's gonna cause the memory footprint of your request of your of your request endpoint to rise, and then eventually your server is gonna crash. Okay? So how I'm going to simulate this is I have a Java Spring app here. It's a REST API. And all it has is a one get route, and it has a number endpoint, and it takes a number parameter that is of type integer. Okay. So also inside of this controller, it has a list of numbers, and then it has a queue, a concurrent linked queue, or a linked queue, so that allows us to add and remove values from the queue uh, concurrently without um, having issues with adding multiples while you're trying to actually also delete. So, so that's very useful. And then it has a private method that just checks if a target number is inside of that list of numbers that we have. And then we have this, uh, this method here uh, called get value, right? So inside of that method, we're adding that value that was requested to the queue. And then we're printing out the size of the queue and then we're actually going to check and run our computationally intensive algorithm to check if that value is in the queue, okay? I'm sorry, not the queue, in the list of numbers. And then at the end, we're gonna remove a value from the queue uh, and then print out the size after we've served that request. And then we're gonna return a response back to the client, okay? so. I said a lot there. So queues, remember, are ordered. So that means that's the first in, first out data structure. So the first value that was inserted is the first value to leave. Um, so think of standing in line at the coffee shop. If you're first in line, you're going to be first to get served potentially. Okay. So that's kind of how a queue works. Um, and then our is present algorithm is actually going to run in uh, o of n time because we're going to potentially have to check every value in the list of numbers to see if that value is present. Okay, and then let's let's take a look at how we generate this list. So in this list wrapper class, I have this get list method that just instantiates a new list of numbers and fills those numbers uh, from um, zero to nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Then it shuffles those numbers to introduce some randomness and then returns that list back. So back in our number controller, we're gonna have an array or a list of numbers that is uh, almost a million, value, a million values wide, okay? Now, so let's go take a look at our client. In our client, we have, it's a very simple client, it's just a class with a main method. 
and all it's doing is we have a for loop that goes from 0 to 245 and then it creates on every iteration it creates a new thread a new parallel path of execution that is going to dispatch a request to our server and then that it's going to set that number parameter to whatever value of j it is so you can imagine we're going to create 250 different threads that are going to print or that are going to query our database at the same time or close to the same time and then those threads are going to get that response back and show it to the output. So we're going to see what this looks like and I'm going to start up the server. Okay, great. So we see that the server is started up and now I'm going to run the client code. Okay, so we see that our client code run ran asynchronously because we have all these values but they're out of order. And then when we take a look at our server side terminal output, we see that as the requests are coming in, we see that the queue size blows up in size because all of those concurrent requests are getting stored inside of our database or not our database inside of our server as they're getting served right so as a new request comes in the because our server is single threaded it basically tries to call this is present uh function as it gets a new value, right? But remember, this t this function is present takes time to run, but because we're getting many multiple concurrent requests at the same time, our queue is unable to empty fast enough as those requests are coming in because it takes too long to run this is present method. Okay, so we see that like uh, the queue size uh, blows up to like 150. Uh, elements. So that basically means that our application is running really slow and we're accumulating um, uh, a lot of me our memory footprint of our application is growing because we're holding on to all of those requests. And so this is pretty, uh, this isn't very realistic right now because we're running on localhost and it's talking to a server on localhost. So what we can do to introduce some latency so latency is basically the time it takes to get a response back from a server when you send a request. So we can simulate that by saying thread.sleep of 500. So like it's gonna wait for half a second. I'm gonna restart the server. Awesome, so our server's restarted and then I'm gonna run our client again. And we see it ran pretty effectively still, but then our terminal, the size of our queue still grew pretty substantially. So. It, it, it's not too much bigger than what we saw at 154, but it's still bigger. So if we try to increase this, say, to two seconds of latency, what happens then? And so our requests are visibly taking time. And then if we look at our terminal output, you see that while it does, it does, the latency does affect things pretty substantially, we see that, you know, we hit 199. So out of the 250 requests, our queue size grew to approximately 199 in size. So that is really telling um, about, you know, if we, if we can speed up this is present method, we may be able to decrease the queue size. So a way to do this, if our list of numbers is fixed, then all we need to really do is sort that list once and then we can run what is called a binary search, which is a very efficient algorithm to search for a value in a list. Okay, so what we're gonna do to implement this is we're just gonna go to our get list method and we're gonna comment out the randomization step of shuffling our array list. We're gonna go back to our number controller and then instead of doing a linear search, which is what this is, we're actually just going to do a binary search. So we're just gonna return collections.binary search of numbers comma target and so if the value is inside of that list it's going to return a positive index a positive or zero index but if it's less than zero that means the value isn't uh, currently in the list the what we want to basically return is if the value returned from binary search is greater or equal to zero so let's run this again so we're going to restart our server okay great we run it we restarted our server server and then let's hit run again so with our latency that we still have introduced, let's see how big our queue size got up to. So we see that 
it still got pretty high up to that 99 again. So if we instead remove this thread.sleep and then we run this server again and we run our client again, we see that our queue size basically doesn't grow above about 90 or so. 93, 93, 96, 97, 99, 100. So right around 99 or 100 or so, it, it, it tops out. If we compare that to our early result, we see that our queue size was well above 100. We see like 140, 150, 160, and so on. So what we basically just witnessed is we've seen that using an efficient searching algorithm, has enabled our server to decrease the amount of uh, latency, quote unquote, latency or work that it needs to do to send a response back to the user. And so what that impact means is that the number of requests that are waiting in our queue is much less than what we would have to implement if we just left the array as a random set of integers and searched uh, linearly. Okay, so I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of perspective on why data structures and algorithms are really important, uh, especially at scale. So when people say your code doesn't scale, this is exactly what they mean, right? So if there's a really way, if there's a really, really fast algorithm that you can use to keep things sorted or to search for things, then that's why you want to use those because at scale, when you're getting billions and billions of requests a second, you want to get that request in, do some work as fast as possible, and dump the response back to the user. So that way your server doesn't build up this massive queue of requests that need to come in. Okay, and then also there are some other alternatives to handling a request load, and we won't really get into those, but you could use something like message queues and a few other things that kind of delay the time it takes for a server to basically get a request in. I hope that you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe and don't miss out on future videos. Thanks.